everybody, Mama Looney here, back with another video as I prepare for my Appalachian Trail through hike next year. In my last video, I had said that I had started on my resupply boxes and that I would make a video later about that, so that's what this video is partially going to be about. But before I do that, I wanted to go over my cook system. I have gotten it and used it, and am going to be using it again. I used it for one of those backpacker meals, which did not turn out to be very good. It was mesquite chicken or something like that. This one's a different company. This one's the Backpacker's Pantry. So hopefully this one's a little bit better than the last one because if it's not, then I'm just going to avoid these while I'm on the trail. I can be a slightly picky eater and um, the last one tasted like somebody dumped a bunch of sugar substitute into it. It's the best way I have to explain it. Also in my last video, I had said that I would try to post a little more often than once every three weeks. I do apologize for that. So let's go over my cook system. I had in my head what I was going to be getting from my research online and everything like that. And then I got to REI and got some assistance just to double check everything. And the feedback that I got from the people at REI actually had me change my mind a good bit. So for the stove system, what I had picked out was the MSR Pocket Rocket. And what I ended up getting was the Snow Peak um, Light Max. This one, you have the ability to control the temperature, which you do not have with the Pocket Rocket. Also for part of my cook system, I ended up getting the Pinnacle Solist which was going to be just enough for just me. It shows this little hot lips thing in the box and it showed it in the picture online too, but I didn't look at the picture until after I'd already gotten this. That does not come with it. So if anybody sees those pictures, um, just be aware of that. But I really like most of it so far. I'll explain the slight changes I'm going to be making. Then an extra thing that I got, and I know backpackers aren't really supposed to have too many extras, because you're trying to keep down weight, but the extra thing that I had gotten was a fuel can stabilizer. It was like five bucks, and I don't know if I will end up taking it or not, but it seems like a wise idea to have that, because one of the big issues is being sure that everything is properly balanced, so you don't, you know, start the woods on fire. So I have the system right here. It comes in this little bag. Um, I'm probably not going to take it, it's supposed to be so that you can wash your dishes in it and so that it can kind of contain it all. But number one, it's like three dishes. You don't really need a sink to do three dishes in. Not out in the middle of the woods anyways. And it's just extra weight. It's uh, watertight to be able to fill it with that. But as you see here, the handle folds over and um, shuts down on the lid so that everything doesn't fall out. So you just have to squeeze it here and pop it out. This is our cook pan. It comes with the lid that is both a strainer and a sipper. A mug slash bowl. I think it's supposed to be a mug. It's got a, um, it has a removable cozy on it to try and keep your drink warm as it's sitting there. It came with what they're calling a foom. I don't like this. I will be replacing this part. I don't know if you can see it. It kind of collapses down like this and opens back up. But the issue is behind it where it touches, it leaves too much room for bacteria and everything to get in there. The one time I had used it, a bunch of food got stuck in those grooves and down in the grooves of the handle of this. So I'm probably going to get one of the plain titanium sporks. Um, probably one of the longer ones that I've seen, and just go with that. It's not going to fit in my pot, but I think it will be, I think I broke it now. I think it will be a better idea. Don't use the foon. <laughs> also sitting in here, since everything is able to nest, I already have my fuel canister, and this is the fuel stabilizer that I spoke of. This is made by Jetboil. I didn't specifically see one for GSI Outdoors or for Snow Peak, but this one fits any of the same canisters, so it doesn't really matter that it didn't go to the specific cook system. And it came with a little bag that I have put my Snow Peak in. The Snow Peak came with its own bag too, 
but it seemed like it was a heavier bag and I didn't see the point in taking both. So it folds down like this and then you just spin everything around and you open these up and lock them down and I think that's supposed to keep it from moving. Yeah, that keeps it from moving. And then this will screw on to the fuel canister. That got a little fuzzy there. I think I moved too fast. I apologize for the light. I had to do this one inside because it's where my resupply boxes are. I feel like it's messing with the video. All right, so to put this all together, I'm just going to pop this onto here and pop this little cap off. Hopefully this is turned all of the way off. I'm gonna screw this onto here. Now, for anybody who is thinking about hiking that has not used one of these before, um, there is a small startling point. As you screw this on, you hear it coming out. Just make sure to keep screwing it. It is not leaking. Um, it's just a little puff of air, but I was doing it so slowly the first time because I wasn't sure how far I needed to turn it that I startled myself with all of the gas coming out of it. Okay, so I actually have, oh, let me reach it, uh, about three cups of water here. So I'm going to put this into my cook pot because this should be enough to have a couple cups for any of the little backpacker meals, but also to be able to make a cup of tea or coffee or anything like that. So I am going to move you so you can kind of see what's going on here. There we go. You can see my resupply boxes in the background there. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start to turn this over. There we go. That's nice and easy. I don't want it up too high. We want it just up enough to where it will boil this, which I am going to time, but we don't want it up so high that the flame is coming over the edges. All right, I think that's centered. All right, I'm gonna turn this up a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to start a timer to see how long it takes this to boil. In the meantime, I'm going to bring you over here to my resupply boxes. Actually, I'm just gonna probably bring them to me. All right, so I have them split kind of unevenly. So the plan is to have my husband send me um, one box every two weeks. So I've alternated some of the stuff that's going to be in them because I won't be going through everything that quickly to need it sent every two weeks. Some of the stuff may end up getting taken out. I'm not gonna seal them so that I can call him and say either I don't need this, I'm not using it, or there's this other thing that I should have been packing and I forgot, so we'll see how that works. For me, it makes sense to kind of get things as I can starting now and make the resupply boxes rather than just trying to get everything while I'm out there. Okay, so in my resupply boxes so far, I have more toilet paper. I took half rolls of toilet paper and I'm rolling them on themselves without the tube. And so one roll of toilet paper will make two resupply boxes. I'm sure I'll need more than that. Um, but I don't want to be carrying much more than that at a time. So, obviously I'm going to need baby wipes. I got some sponges that I cut into pieces. I got just the hard part of the sponge because I feel like that's all the more I'm going to need. Sorry, just checking on that water there. That's all the more I'm going to need to be able to wash my thing. It was a dollar for a giant pack of them. And this is like half of, a, half of one or a third of one or something like that. So there's one in each of them, so if they start to get nasty, I can throw them out because sponges can harbor bacteria and everything like that. So that's in all of them. There's extra Ziploc bags in all of them. Actually, I think these are hefty. Ziploc is a brand, but you get what I mean. So in them, I have things sticking to themselves. Dr. Bronner's. 
I got big bottles of Dr. Bronner's and kind of split them up. Dr. Bronner's, however, in case anybody was not aware, takes Sharpie off of your plastic stuff. That was an interesting thing to learn. I have conditioner in every other one. The Dr. Bronner's is in all of them. Um, I don't know if I'll end up keeping it on me. I just, I like to be able to condition my hair. I have a lot of hair. As you see, I have this one side shaved. I convinced my husband that for the trail, I'm actually gonna shave the other side too and a little bit underneath where it gets really hot in the summertime. I don't know if I'll do that ahead of time or once summer actually hits or what, but in the meantime, conditioner is needed because my hair gets tangled like crazy. I have deodorant in every other one as well. I know everybody says that you don't need deodorant and won't use deodorant, but I intend to. If I change my mind later, then I have a lot of deodorant waiting for me when I get home and just won't need to buy it again for a long time. Extra scrunchies to be able to put my hair up. Needle tubes of toothpaste. I got a hand sanitizer, but these ones came on these, so I feel like I can just strap this to my pack and hopefully it would stay. And these come off so I can switch it out if I need to get hand sanitizer while I'm out there, if what I'm sending myself isn't enough. Um, I also have laundry pods. There's two, because hiker stuff's supposed to get really stinky. Um, in the resupply boxes, because if I'm resupplying, it means I'm in a town, and hopefully that means I will have the opportunity to do laundry. Not boiling yet. Um, so, like I said, toiletry bag in every box. It kind of switches every other. See, this one doesn't have as much in it. I've started getting different snacks for the trail. Um, I have already been trying things, like what I'm doing with the backpacker meal. Trying to figure out what I like and don't like. So, so far I've got containers of rice and tuna, lots of cliff bars, pine bars. The cliff bars, after you've been eating them a while, are a little dry, like you need something to drink to eat them, but they taste good and they're kind of filling. Um, I've already started working on other stuff too. I've got some oatmeal that I picked up. The um, steel cut oats. I don't remember the brand name of this, but it's officially my favorite cereal right now, or my favorite oatmeal. I've got some fruit leather in here and some of Annie's natural fruit strips. It's like fruit by the foot, but it's actually made from fruit instead of just being like pressed sugar. I don't know, we'll see. It's things that I like that tasted good that don't expire for some time. So I'm just gonna kinda be throwing it all in these boxes and then before the trail I make sure everything's organized and you know kinda have like maybe four days worth of food in each box.